to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Give us one more scripture and then I'll begin to teach. Galatians chapter 1 and verse 24. It's a scripture that has blessed me for many years, and they glorified God. God in me and they glorified God in me God can be glorified in and through a vehicle called man called the saints that there is a degree of excellence there is a degree of results that a man can command in the earth that will compel men to glorify God a few things you may want to write number one the glory of God, I, I wrote a few things down here. The glory of God refers to the full expression of his beauty, his excellence, his infinite value. That when we talk about the glory of God, we refer to the full expression of his beauty, his excellence, his infinite value. The glory of anything is a measure of the value of that thing. You know, it was an ancient practice that was used for coins and metals to measure wealth. So the Bible says that when Christ is glorified through the church, that means something about our lives will help to explain to creation the infinite worth of God. To manifest or reveal God's glory means to make public the infinite value and the worth of God. To manifest or to reveal the glory of God, it means to make public the infinite value and the worth of God. Causing men to honor, desire and desperately seek Him. Please understand my definition. That to to manifest or reveal God's glory means the public to make public the infinite value and worth of God causing men to honor desire and desperately seek him that means that the glory of God is being manifested through a life through a territory to the degree to which their results compel men to honor, to desire, and to desperately seek God. If nothing about my life becomes compelling enough to make men honor God, to make men seek Him, and to make men desire Him, then I am not revealing the glory of the Father. It's important that we understand what we're dealing with here. That the correct understanding of the worth of God is at the mercy of the saints. That there is something, there is a picture of God that we will need to give creation. The revelation of his glory. Something about our lives, our understanding, our results must compel men, not Christians, men, to come into a point of deep reverence, to come into a point of desire and desperate pursuit for God. In business, we call it marketing. Marketing marketing is the technology by which you make a product desirable is that true and so you can employ all kinds of skills sometimes you will have to eat what you want to sell and eat it in a way and manner that makes whoever is watching you to want the same thing are we together now? sometimes you will need to wear what you want to sell the greatest way to market is to be a portrait of what you are promoting that when your life becomes a portrait of what you are promoting, it comes with conviction and power. Is God blessing us already? So when we're talking about the glory of God, it's important that we break it down 
um, so that our understanding becomes fruitful. The effulgence of the worth, the character, the weightiness of God. And then that when that glory is made manifest, it means that we make it compelling. We make it compelling for men to honor God. We make it compelling for men to desire God. We make it compelling for men to seek God. I have seen products that were once desired, but are now no longer desired. Either because they could not subscribe to the changing times. Is that true? Or there was um, laxity in the part of those who were the creators of those products. They did not strive to maintain that passion in the hearts of people. And so companies all around the world continue. They are under pressure. Are we together now? Yes. To invent ways that will continue making products desirable. They can rebrand it. Are we together? They can change the shape. They could add a lot of things. They just employ all those skills. The assignment is to make sure you never lose desire for that product. It is called the revelation of the glory of that product. They find ways to make it relevant. They make children like it. They make adults like it. Look the artistry they go into to make sure they reinvent that product. They can so educate a child and use that child to market the product and all children begin to like it. Then they come to the world of adults and they go through the the, the labor of studying the psychology of adults and they rebrand that product to reflect their understanding. All of that labor is to communicate the same thing, to force you to desire and to see the necessity of that product. Look up please. Isn't it amazing that this object will be missing and you will not be at rest again? They have done something to you to make this product look so necessary. Notice what happens to you when your, your credit is about to run out. You become as restless as someone, I mean, watching someone who is sick. You are restless. Why? They marketed something and made you love it so much. You need it. When you wake up from sleep, you reach they forced it to be more important than many things. Now, I'm not saying it's wrong. I hope you get my idea. I'm just showing how, how much of a good job they did on us. The image and the glory of God is at the mercy of this kind of addiction. We have to create a system of making a generation addicted to everything God. This is what it means to unveil the glory of God. That we institutionalize his consciousness. You become embarrassed if you ever ignore God. That a generation would have brought God to the center of the scene. It has nothing to do with being a Christian or a non-Christian. To make his glory known. Herein is our Father glorified when we bear much fruit. We compel creation. He says, glorify now thy son. So please look up. The agenda is not just the glorification of the sons. The agenda is of that the Father be glorified. Are we together? We're walking John 17 verse 1. But that the technology is that the father does not have to try to draw glory. He just needs to ensure and insist that the son is glorified. That when the son is glorified, inevitably the father will be glorified. So the attention of the father now is to make the saints glorious. Glorious enough to match his idea of glory. Now, if you do not understand this, you will approach all of the indices we'll use later on to measure glory from a carnal standpoint. 
it is this understanding that sponsors stability when we begin to explore the dimensions of God's glory so that you will now know that every index that is used to measure glory is not just to make the saints glorious for nothing that the glory of the saints is a means to an end are we together now we are like a mirror attempting to show the world the excellency of this kingdom the excellency of this God that we so love and we so serve. According to God's intelligence, he had come up with a conclusion that if the saints are not glorified, God will not be marketable enough. This is not something he is trying to think about. He knows what he built in man. And he said men are driven by results. There is only so much of patience that explanations can bring to a man. Results are loud enough to do something to man. So the Bible says that if we are interested in seeing the Father glorified, then we must focus on the glory of the saints. Are we ready tonight? Praise the Lord. Your life reveals God's glory to the degree to which it makes men to honor and seek God. If nothing about your life is compelling enough to make men think about God, then it means you are robbing the Father the opportunity to be glorified in and through your life. But please do not forget that the system is glorify the saints. Then the saints will market and promote your goodness to the world. This is how it works. Lavish your glory on the saints. When you get into any home, usually you would use the quality of the life of the wife, the children, is that true? And all who are within the care of that individual. to You use their lives as a report card to gauge his benevolence, to gauge his sense of responsibility. Is that true? That means that if you come into a house, no matter how decent, no matter how civil the owner of the house is, if you do not see that reflecting in his children and the environment, then it means that it is not his, a description of who he truly is. Is that true? So if the saints do not rise in light, it will make the world to continue to question the truths about God that they read in Scripture. For instance, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with my loving kindness. That is, that is, it has to go beyond a statement to compel people. There must be someone on earth who personifies that reality. There has to be an individual who will make that scripture come alive. Paul calls them living epistles. Are we together? If it is true that your background does not matter in dealing with God, that God is able to pick a man from a dunghill, it shouldn't remain a memory verse. There has to be someone, a people preferably, on earth who can eventually exemplify that dimension. That people can look at the yesterday version of you and tomorrow's version of you and you remind them of a scripture that God is able to lift they will never forget that scripture for as long as you are alive. Because every time they see you, you have become a continuation of their Bible study. Beyond their reading table. Your life now has become a living epistle. Are we blessed? If the Bible says, I will restore the years that the canker worm has eaten, it will remain a profitless scripture until someone is bold enough to show us how God makes this happen. Like Job. Isn't it amazing that every time God wants to help you understand scripture, he will show you the story of a person. He personifies the mysteries of the kingdom, not only in parables, but in men. Job then becomes God's portrait of what restoration looks like. Jacob becomes God's portrait of what encounters look like. Abraham becomes God's portrait of what a blessed life looks like. 
Are we together now? It was never God's design that it should stop with those characters. Your life should be a continuation of his explanation. If in your lifetime you cannot capture a dimension, personify a dimension of God, you failed in your living. Roger, are we together? I'm trying to be as simple as possible. Something about your life should give God a theme. That every time God wants to remind people of a dimension of him, your face can, can do justice to that dimension of God. When God wants to show someone that I can lift men from a dunghill, suddenly you appear in their dreams, you appear in their visions. All I want is for you, for you to be glory. For you to be lifted, all I want is for you, for you to be glorified. When God wants to demonstrate what favor looks like, then your life becomes the portrait. Your life will be an epistle of wonder, how you defy barriers. How you veto the ill speakings of men by mysteries that men cannot understand. You become the delight of a generation. Let me tell you, God is depending on us to become extensions of his possibilities. There is a lot that God is that has not been seen because the saints have not aligned enough for these new dimensions of God to be revealed. Make no mistakes. Everything we know about God is what someone advocated enough. And where his faith stopped, that was where the revelation of God stopped. But it doesn't mean that's all God can. Is it not because someone, a great man of God, was able to build a church, for instance, and respectfully speaking, within one year, he now used his testimony to show us how far God can go to mean what he says. But what other dimensions are locked up in the spirit? waiting for the alignment of the saints the bible says many miracles did jesus in the presence of his disciples which were not recorded which were not recorded which were not recorded that means all you believe is all you were told how far you believe is how far you saw but there were others that were not recorded and could it be that God seeks those dimensions to find expression? I wonder what else Jesus did that was not recorded. I wonder what else Jesus said that was not recorded. I only know that a nation can be born in one day because he said, little children, have you any catch? He said, no. He said, cast your net. He showed us the possibilities that can happen by personifying it. Listen, more than our speakings, our living must begin to speak. Our lives must begin to become compelling testimonies. Let me tell you something I know about men. And I don't claim to know so much, but I know this about men. They will follow you to death when you have results. Except you have results, you will remain a noisemaker and that for a long time and when they get tired they will let you know they've exhausted their patience men are obsessed about results are we blessed already glorify now thy son adorn your son with a dimension of your hand and your glory for the sake of your majesty make your son become something a species of reality that is worth studying that when people sit and look at your life the strange thing is the more they look at you they don't remember you they remember him so when they keep looking at your life and analyze the possibilities around your life and wonder by what mysteries they conjure themselves together to walk they can only end with one conclusion this is the lord's doing and it is marvelous in us hear me god does not just want to give you a job 
he wants to give it in a way that will make someone wake up in the night and say now this is if you get a job men's way god is not glorified he wants to sign on that process when you examine it you will know that something in this equation does not add up for you to be lifted all i want is for you for you to be glorified for you to be lifted You look at the story of this great ministry. You look at the progressions of the dealings of God. And you look at where God has brought this ministry. If you are honest and truthful, it should bring you to one conclusion. This is the Lord's doing. Hallelujah. You hear the story of so many people. And then you look at the background. Sometimes when they take you to the villages and the places they grew from, it was not Nathaniel's fault when he said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Don't, don't be harsh on the man. There was a track record. He was not speaking out of nothing. Could it be that something God will do in your life in this conference will turn you into a wonder that people know that the last week's version of you the last week's version of you, that Kabarus Kalabarus de Kenyatta. The last time I checked, you were not serious with God. You were jobless. I know that you were just loitering around the streets of Abuja. What happened between last week and Riha is a miraculous you. A dimension of you that now dumbfounds principalities and powers. Listen. Please understand this. God does not just want us to live. He wants us to live in a way that our lives compel discussions. Not just like talking about politicians. It's impossible to watch certain men and keep quiet. Are we blessed? When our lives become too ordinary, we rob God the opportunity to be glorified. When our lives become too predictable, too scientific, too sociological, there must be a dimension of our life that only that will ask questions only God can answer. Am I blessing you tonight? The saints, I wrote something down here. The saints have been equipped and continue to be equipped with the tools that will help them manifest the glory of God. Please understand this. That God is so passionate about revealing his glory in the saints and then deriving glory out of that that he went out of his way to supply all of the spiritual equippings. This is where my teaching starts tonight. We're well, going to be very brief. And then we'll pray. But it's not just enough to know that God intends for the saints to be glorified. It's not just enough to know that in the glory of the saints is the glory of the Father. Are we together? It's also important for us to know that God went so far to supply all of the equipments that will make for the saints to rise regardless of the backgrounds. You have to understand this. The key word is regardless. Regardless. Apostle, you don't know where I came from. Regardless. Apostle, you don't know what disadvantages around my life. Regardless. In fact, the deeper, the deeper the obstacles, the more the glory is revealed. When the journey of your life is too simple, you don't have much to say. The world will not even need you. Don't you know that there are certain, listen, there are certain stages in life that there is a requisite level of pain and tragedy that qualifies you to stand there. If your life is too innocent and does not carry the signature of the depth of God's power and love, do you not know that what you are going through now that you call a disadvantage is how favor works? Listen, Listen, please understand this. God is opening our eyes. He tells Mary, sir. He says, Thou art highly favored. 
And the next thing that happens to Mary is a very serious scandal of a woman having her stomach protrude. And then she now says that she's pregnant for a ghost. How silly can that sound? You should be repentant already. And now you are telling the people, I mean, a ghost. And yet God calls it favor. What else would have made you remember Mary? Do you not know that when God said, I will favor you, the three years of joblessness is a track record that will make you not necessarily for what you are saying, but for what you went through. Listen, a time will come you will go to a place where only you has your own testimony. That becomes your edge. Pain is favor. Your limitations can be God walking something. He is branding a testimony. If there are too many people, the law of value tells us that when you are easily replaceable, then you are not worth much. So God will, will allow a construction, a pathway that when men see, they say, you follow this? You say, yes, sir. And then they will place a demand on that God that led you through that kind of wilderness. This is why they feared the nation of Israel. When they saw the cities they conquered and they saw the conditions that they survived by, their enemies with their, with their, their entire, the battalion, the, the, the strength would fail them. Who is this mysterious God that fights for these weak people? We have studied them over time. When they say they are coming to you, run away. When her man came to his wife, and said, can you imagine the embarrassment? She asked him one question. She said, tell me again, where is Mordecai from? He said, he's a Jew. He said, you are finished. This story is not even over. There is a story with those people that when God begins to fight for them, and if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what is Help me, Roger. And if our God is for us, then who will ever stop us? And our God is with us, then what can stand again? Imagine how demotivating it will sound. I grew up, met God. Two days later, I became a man of God. Come to my church. For what? What is the wow factor in your track record? What is compelling? Where is God in that equation? It's too basic. It's too human. Is God speaking to someone? But then you say, once upon a time, I was in the valley of the shadow of death. I didn't even know that I will survive. But in that place, so when you say God is a lifter, they want to doubt, but your life stops their unbelief. Immediately they want to doubt, the Holy Spirit reminds them, look at the man talking. Is he not a personification of that reality? Listen, let, I, I don't know how I got into this painting now. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not supposed to get there at all. Listen, in, in Luke chapter 1, from verse 1. Let me show you something. When we become reflectors of God's glory, we compel people to believe that dimension of God more than any other thing. There are things that the Bible calls the things that are most surely believed. Please give us Luke chapter 1 and verse 1. For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things with most surely believed among us. There are things that should be most surely believed in logic. There are ministries when you get there, prosperity is most surely believed because the testimony and the track record that birth revelation is too real for you to doubt it. There are ministries when you go there, excellence is most surely believed because they're of the life and the power of God. Are we together? It is true that we believe. 
But not everything is believed at the same degree. As I've gone through in my experience with God and in life, that have planted a greater conviction about God than other areas. You have to understand how God works. Do not be afraid when God begins to pass you through the seasons that makes you become a personification of a dimension of his glory. The furnace of affliction, the cave of Adulam, is all, but it is fatal. Please hear me. Let me speak to someone. Not that God will give you a job, but if he had given it to you two years ago, you and all those around you, there is a dimension of come out. He's not interested in the job. He's interested in a message that that story will bring out. He's interested in that, that message like, like a, a, a painter using a canvas. There is something he wants to draw about himself through your life. I don't have a lot of regard for people who don't have a track record of a dimension. I love them sincerely. But when I see people through the valley of the shadow of death, their worship is different. There are times they stand and they keep quiet and yet they are singing the loudest in that place because their hearts have a voice. Father, glorify thy son. Glorify now thy son. Do something. Lead me through an experience that will bring me to a point where my life becomes a testimony. That my life would not become so ordinary as to make men forget you when they look at me. That if they ever forget you when they look at me, I become a reminder to them. So someone leaves his house doubting God. I've been in this abuja. I don't know if God can lift. I don't know if God can bless. I've been serving God for years. No reward. And then a voice does not need to speak. It is coming in a man's experience. Suddenly you are passing them and the Holy Spirit now says, Now you know this woman. Look at her five years ago. And now rethink what you said. Is it profitable to serve in the house of God? If the only way you preach is by opening a Bible, you are not preaching well. Your preaching should continue whether the Bible is opened or not. Because the book should never be closed. You are also a book. When this is closed, this should remain open. You stand before the world and they look at your life. What did you say? God does not favor people? Look at my life. What did you say? God does not lift. Look at my life. What did you say? God is too slow. The persuasion that comes from your personal experience. The Bible is a revelation of what God can do. But it's not a revelation of all he can do. It's a revelation of what men captured. The Bible does not hide it that some things were not recorded. But that these were recorded sufficient enough to help us believe. In people of God, there is so much more that God can do in and through our lives. But it is important for us to understand how he does it. When God tells you he is going to favor you, cry for grace. Don't just start joking. Because his system of bringing favor is only beautiful in the end. You don't like what I'm saying? I'm so sorry. I wish I... But what I'm saying is as true as the name of... That when God decides to lift you, He says, if God be for us, there has to be someone who will act that scripture. So sin one will be everybody being against you. Come on now, if you are directing a movie and you are going, if the name of your movie is that scripture, how will you act it? Remember, you wanted to sell. Scene one will be darkness. So is, is God a good actor by giving us description? This is God creates the heavens and the earth. 
Then he now says the earth was dark and void. For many years I said, God, couldn't you just jump me? Just go straight to the Holy Spirit. How then would you appreciate him? It took that darkness to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Look how God details darkness as if he is afraid of it. The bones very dry. Go straight to the point and say, there was an army. I spoke and an army. Why give the details of the darkness? So that you will see the excellency of the glory. So every time things are getting dark, the ones who know God know that that is only a play. Your goodness is real. I testify. Your goodness is real. Your favor is real, I testify. Your mercies are real, I testify. Your lifting is real, I testify. Say like Apostle Peter, the things we have seen, the things we have heard, and that which our hands have handled of the word of life, your gospel no longer becomes a cunningly devised fable. You are speaking from a standpoint of conviction. Take your eyes away from the supposedly crushing company. The jealousy of God is too much to allow you to be that embarrassed. If you know something about the love of God, you will find rest even in darkness. Because he's, he's orchestrating something. You commanded light. To shine, not into, out of. Out of. Out of darkness. Mary, do not be embarrassed. You don't even know the name of what is happening to you. Pregnant for a ghost. Not sure of what will happen with Joseph. And God says, that is why you are highly Jesus is speaking and he said the hour has come glorify thy son and the next thing goes is that how you glorify the son I hope you are ready for this conference you glorify the son by coronating him you glorify the son by saying hear ye him I have glorified him he said in John 12 and I will yet glorify him there is a kind of glory that comes by smiling. But there is a kind of glory that comes when you cry. It's all glory. Believers, hear me. I show you the glory that excels. Jesus is hanging on that cross. And everyone is feeling sorry for him. Jesus... Where did you keep your power? Where did you keep the miracles? And Jesus says, I'm being glorified. The technology is that if I be lifted up from the earth, is that how to lift a man up? The last time we saw Mordecai being glorified, he was on a chariot. Jesus, what are you doing naked on a tree? Being glorified. On a tree? Yes, sir be starting this conference ministering to someone tonight change your interpretation of the things around you lord why does it get darker when i am praying the more i fast it's getting darker the more i pray the carnal mind cannot understand spiritual things and if you allow men to be the interpreters it takes the spirit to interpret don't let men interpret the handwriting on your wall from sociology. They will call light darkness. So there are times that the way to go up is to go down. Going down, you should not cry. You should rejoice. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray.
pray pray for your destiny the face of development lord grant me the discipline 